Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in and in today's video we are actually going to talk about lists again and if you have watched my previous video actually I was talking about the list view dynamic values uh, and in this today video we're going to talk about lists and we are going to talk actually about how you can order lists uh, randomly. So what I mean by that is that to shuffle the list and just display the list in a random order. Every time the list is shown to the user, it will actually be on the random order. And why you need that, in my case particular, for example, I have this fill flow quests, I have this in incoming or uh, future quests, and uh, those are actually user-based vote ones. Uh, so, and I have like a few ideas, let's say 10, 20 ideas of uh, future quests. Uh, and the whole idea is that people can actually vote on the quests and what will be the next quest. Those are live sessions that I do, if you don't know already. Uh, and I just want them to be in a random order each time uh, you can actually see the list. I want the list to be in a random order because if I order it by name, for example, or by any other or by ID. So if I go to, for example, in my case, I'm using Superbase, but you can use any other backend out there. You can use uh, uh, Firebase or Superbase, or I think, for or the current record of the video, those are the only uh, backends that you can use or API calls probably. Yeah, API calls, I think, I think it should work the same way. I think so. I'm not sure to be honest, but let me know in the comments below if it's working for API calls. I haven't tried that for API calls. Uh, but the whole idea is that here you can order them, for example, in my case, I can order them by ID, by created by, by title, by who was the idea of, by votes or by image. Uh, and to be honest, I don't want to uh, order them by any of those because if I order them by title, it will be always the one who has the A, for example, in the title, and then to be always the same order. If I order them by um, votes, um, it will be only the top, for example, votes will be on the top of the list and or or only on the bottom of the list. Uh, but that's not what I want as well, because in that case, it would be biased as well, because if someone is voting a lot for, if, if some people are voting a lot for something and it will go top, I think the, the I think people will actually get influenced by that and just vote for that thing as well. I don't, I actually want it to be a random thing. I don't care about the votes. I don't care about the title. I want to display every single item in a random order each time this uh, page is viewed in my app. Uh, and the reason for that, like I said, is that I want, I don't want people to be infused by the votes, for example, or by the title or by the order. I want the order to be every time the order will be different one uh, or the random one. So that's why I don't use the order. I don't, I don't like this order. And I'm going to show you how you can actually do that. It's pretty easy. And I'm going to show you now a working demo. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually do that. Okay, so let me show you a working demo of it. Uh, this is the page uh, which I set up, which is the full flow quest page. And currently I have this upcoming uh, and this page will be changed in the future. So if the design is uh, something else, don't worry about it. But I have something like upcoming quests or vote for upcoming quests or whatever. Uh, and then when you click on that, uh, it, it will actually show you all the ideas of people. Uh, or actually have it. And actually, if I like the idea, I'll put it in this list, which is coming from Superbase database. And the idea is that th those will be random every time. So you can actually see on the first line right now, you have this scroll, uh, convert, uh, AWS, Google Maps. But if I refresh right now this page, I should have a different order. So let's actually see this. Yeah, exactly. So we have AWS, we have Convert, we have uh, FB Storage, we have Stripe. Uh, and 
<clears throat> for some reason, when I click, uh, it is actually uh, reordered them, which I don't know why, to be honest. Uh, but if I refresh again, you can actually see a different order again. So again, you see Stripe, Cast, AWS, X Access. And for some reason, when I click their reorder again, I think this is something sort of related. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you can actually see that the working demo, it is actually every time this page is loaded, the order is different. It doesn't matter how many votes it has. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter actually uh, the title. It only matters that it's actually random each time this loads. So let me actually show you how you can achieve that. So in order to achieve that, I actually set up a very simple custom function, uh, which I will actually uh, post the link to this code in the description of this video below. Uh, but it should work right now. Like I said, I'm using uh, Superbase but it should actually work with uh, everything that you can uh, throw at it. Like it, as long as it, as it, as it is a list, uh, then it should work. So it could be like list of data types, for example, or list of strings or list of uh, Firebase documents or list of super base rows or list of whatever you can think of actually, list of JSONs if it's coming from an API call at list of JSONs, it should still work. The only thing that you need to do is actually change uh, the argument. So you have to make sure that you put the argument correctly that you want to pass. In my case, like I said, it's super base row, but in your case, it could be JSON, it could be data type, it could be document, uh, it could be a document from uh, Firebase. Uh, so make sure that you put the argument and then this code will actually stay the same. You don't have to change anything in this code. It's actually staying the same. And the last thing that you need to do is actually make sure that the return type is actually the same type as your argument type and make sure that this is a list as well. <clears throat> and then in my case particular, uh, fortunately, Flow is not allowing us uh, to actually test this. It's saying test function, but this is actually, uh, you cannot actually test this. Uh, fortunately, when you have uh, a document of uh, Firebase document or a super base role, you cannot actually test it. If I click on test, it will actually give me an error. Unfortunately, it says the error running this uh, function, please contact uh, support for, for IO. Uh, and uh, this is like a limitation of the flow, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, this is how you set it up. And from this is the code. And what about setting it up inside uh, your uh, UI? So let me actually duplicate this page and show you what is the, so to say, normal way of setting it up or what is the intuitive way to set it up. Uh, I will actually edit this and copy it. Uh, and then I will actually delete this from here. I just want to show you in this copy uh, how, you can, how you can do it normally, but then I can show you uh, what is the right way to do it. So normally you have something like this, which is getting the data uh, from your backend. In my case, like I said, it's super base. Uh, but now you don't have a way to actually run the custom function. So here you don't have a way to run the custom function. So that's why this is not the right way of doing it. Uh, you have to actually query from a top uh, uh, or a higher or a top widget. In my particular case, this would be the scaffold widget, but if you don't have some top level or of the or the scaffold widget is actually already busy with something you have uh, already a, a, uh, a backend there or something else or maybe a backend is what what you have and then you can actually wrap this widget inside a container uh, you can actually make it so it's without any height or width uh, and then you can put this uh, 
query over here. So you can actually put the query over here. You can again paste the query over here. Uh, and then here, uh, you will remove this query from here because removing it will actually give you access to uh, generate dynamic children. So when I click on generate dynamic children, now I can supply the list. And if I click over here, I can supply the list and the list will actually, in my case, will come actually from custom function and it's shuffle order. So using this uh, custom function, this will actually give me access to shuffle the list. And I will, I will choose the list, which is coming from the container and I'll just click confirm, no further changes, confirm. And this will be like a single item, like this will be an item, or in my case, this would be uh, upcoming uh, yes, or upcoming quests or upcoming quest because it's a single one. And then I'll save it and it says it will generate a dynamic children for you. And I'll say, yes, please do that for me. And everything works now. Uh, and I will delete this copy and I'll just show you how I did it. I did it actually the same way that I show you. Uh, if I go to upcoming, I do it in my scaffold uh, and I have this uh, query which is querying the list uh, and then I have in my grid view but this can be a colon this can be a row this can be a list view this can be any uh, I think if I if I actually click on the replace widget those are the widgets that you can use it can be a colon row wrap list view or uh, struggle struggle view uh, any of those should work uh, as long as you have this generate uh, dynamic children. And then I pass uh, the, the list from uh, this uh, query, uh, from this widget. And again, I'm using the uh, custom function uh, and I'm having this upcoming quest. And then I can actually use the upcoming quest and pass it in, in my case, I'm passing it into a component, uh, but uh, you can just do it directly here if you don't need a component. I actually need a component uh, because of the votes, because I wanted the votes to be dynamically uh, <clears throat> dynamically changing. So that's why I do it like that. If you haven't watched actually my video about dynamic uh, list view, dynamic, uh, vo uh, dynamic variable, sorry, uh, you should. Uh, and uh, it's very... Uh, it's very interesting. So yeah, that was actually it. I wanted to show you that because I wanted to do it myself uh, and I was wondering how I can do it. And probably there are a lot of people that uh, wanted to do that as well. And I think it's one of the basic uh, things uh, regarding when you're working with data uh, to get the data randomly each time. So like I said, it's, it's not that hard and the code is not that hard. So it's, uh, I think, relatively simple to implement. So thank you very much for watching. And before you go, actually, and uh, before you go, I just want to let you know that I set up a Discord channel, which will be for my 3000 subscribers. Uh, so thank you very much for everyone who subscribed to the channel. The Discord channel will be officially announced when I reach the 3000 subscribers. Uh, it is uh, well structured. It will be well structured uh, with the uh, general tab. Uh, which you can see the info, the news, and we will have also click to talk. So you can actually talk to other members of the channel. And we have the YouTube videos as well, where you can see all the YouTube videos. You can also have, if you want to, uh, uh, if, if you want to request a video, you can go to uh, video requests. And then we have the paid members from YouTube, uh, which they have a separate channel where they can talk. Uh, I also have from the mentoring sessions, we have the paid uh, members. And then it's structured by backend for the flow API calls, Superbase uh, SQLite. And then you have the design where you can ask design questions. We have the custom code, uh, which is uh, uh, code uh, expressions, uh, custom functions, uh, custom widgets, custom actions, and for the flow source code, we can uh, talk about the for the flow source code as well. And we have integrations as well, uh, pub dev uh, packages, platforms, if you want to integrate different platforms, we have the general integrations. 
and then we have, you don't see it from my face, but we have also the settings. We have the dynamic links, we have the push notifications, we have the app settings, we have the Android deployment, we have the iOS deployment, and we have the web deployment. And the last thing that we have is actually we have the languages and we have uh, other languages. So we have like uh, Swedish, for example, Spanish, Portuguese, you know, other languages that, that people from those countries or those languages can talk uh, in their own language. Uh, so yeah, like I said, thank you very much for all the subscribers. Uh, and uh, before you go, I just want to say that the paid membership for YouTube is now open. So you can be a paid member to my YouTube channel, which means a lot. And thank you very much for all the people who are right now paid members to the channel.